JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week June the 6th until June the 10th. I am Harald Amos Pistros, Head of Research here at JFD and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the, color, the calendar is rather interesting this week. We don't get too many data, but the data we get, uh, some of the data we get are very interesting. We have two major central banks holding their monetary policy gatherings, and those are the RBA and the ECB. We also have the US inflation numbers and Canada's employment data, which could well shape expectations around the Fed and the Bank of Canada. While China price figures, also due to be released this week, uh, could prove important for the broader market sentiment. In any case, let's take things from the beginning. Today, uh, the calendar appears light with no top tier data on the schedule, uh, while New Zealand's and Switzerland's markets are closed, are staying closed due to the Queen's birthday and the Pentagon uh, respectively. On Tuesday, the main item on the agenda is the RBA interest rate decision. At its uh, latest meeting, this bank decided to hike interest rates by 25 basis points to 0.35% from 0.10%, surprising the, surprising the financial community, which was expecting a 15 basis points increase. The bank committed to doing uh, what is necessary to ensure that inflation returns to target over time and explicitly said that this, this will require a further lift in interest rates over the period, over the period ahead. Now, the bank is expected to, to continue hiking uh, this uh, week by another 25 basis points, but with market expectations uh, over, uh, over uh, its actions, this may not be enough, according to the ASX 30-day interbank cash rate futures yield curve. Market, particip market participants expect another nine quarter point hikes by the end of the year. So, for the Aussie to gain, the RBA needs to, to accompany this 25 basis points increase with very hoggish remarks, or even surprise participants uh, again uh, by delivering another larger than expected hike. Actually, data since the previous meeting support the notion of the RBA staying hoggish. The trade data for March and April revealed an increasing surplus. Retail sales acceler accelerated by more than expected in the first quarter. And GDP slowed, but less than the consensus suggested. Only the employment report came on the weak side, but with the unemployment rate staying at 3.9%, and if we look back to historic data, this is the lowest unemployment rate since 1974. So, even uh, adding uh, fewer jobs uh, than previously, this appears a bit normal if we have the unemployment rate resting at a at the lowest level since uh, 1974. Now, as for the rest of uh, Tuesday's events, we get the final UK services and composite PMIs for May, but as it is usually the case, the final prints are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. Canada's trade balance for April is also due to be released and the forecasts point to an increasing surplus. Now, following the nation's current account balance, which turned positive and marked the widest uh, current account surplus since the second quarter of 2008. An increasing trade surplus as well, 
combined with a decent employment report on Friday, could keep expectations over more tightening by the Bank of Canada elevated and thereby allow participants to keep buying loonies. Now, on Wednesday, during the Asian session, Japan releases its final GDP numbers for the first quarter with the forecasts uh, suggesting a small downside revision to minus 0.3% quarter over quarter from minus 0.2%. A negative GDP rate is very unlikely to alter Bank of Japan's official plans of maintaining an ultra-loose monetary policy for now. And uh, making a parenthesis here, with the Bank of Japan staying as, uh, as the most uh, dovish or one of the most dovish major central banks, we believe that the yen could weaken further, especially now the focus is back to, mon is back to monetary policy divergence rather than fears of economic slowdown. Now, later in the day, we have the UK construction PMI for May, which is expected to have slid fractionally to 58 from 58.2, and the final print of Eurozone's GDP for the first quarter, which is expected to confirm its preceding estimates. Now, on Thursday, the central bank torch will be passed to the ECB. I repeat, we have, uh, we, we have the RBA on Tuesday, tomorrow during the Asian session. We believe that the bank will appear uh, hawkish uh, based on the data, but we don't know that whether this will be hawkish, hawkish enough to satisfy market expectations around future rate hikes. If so, the Aussie could uh, could receive extra support. Now, with regards to the ECB, the meeting is on Thursday. Interest rates are not expected to be touched from this bank, but we believe that this will be a very important meeting as it will set the stage for the bank's next couple of moves. Remember that a couple of weeks ago, President Christine Lagarde said that the ECB is likely to take its deposit facility rate out of the negative territory by the end of September and could lift it further if needed. Now, given that the deposit rate is at minus 0.5%, we initially believed that this means two quarter point liftoffs, one in July and one in September. And actually, some other ECB officials also supported that view. However, last week, Eurozone's preliminary CPI data showed that headline inflation accelerated to 8.1% year-over-year uh, year from 7.4% at a time when the forecast was 7.7%, while the core rate rose to 3.8% from 3.5%. This may have sparked speculation of, uh, of more aggressive action by the ECB, perhaps that the size of the July hike may be 50 basis points, and even if officials hike by 25 basis points in July, they could hint a bigger increase for September. So we will monitor uh, the language of this meeting to get clearer hints and clues on uh, how the bank is planning to proceed. A hoggish narrative by policymakers could help the euro recover some more ground, especially against currencies, the central banks of which are expected to stay ultra loose, like the yen. However, we doubt that uh, the common currency could keep outperforming its US counterpart for long, especially after several Fed officials expressed, expressed the view that they are not in support of a break in rate hikes after summer, at least at the moment with the data uh, they have in hand. Uh, after all, the US economy is in a better shape than the Eurozone, which could allow uh, Fed officials keep delivering double hikes, especially, uh, uh, excuse me, despite some worries over a slowdown recently. In order to, to start examining the case for, a, for, for, for stronger advances in euro dollar, we would like to have clearer and more convincing evidence that inflation in the US is easing and headed back towards the Fed's 2% target. The CPI data on Friday may, may be a good starting point, but we will discuss those data uh, in a while. Now, back to the ECB. In case the ECB disappoints, the common currency is likely to come under an immediate selling pressure. Now, as for the rest of Thursday's events, the only data set uh, worth mentioning is China's trade balance, trade balance for May, with the surplus expected to have increased to $58 billion from $51.12 This could be positive for the broader market sentiment, especially 
amid relaxing COVID-related restrictions in the world's second largest economy, and especially if Chinese inflation eases on Friday. So we have better exports, increasing surplus, relaxing COVID-related restrictions in China, and if inflation also slows down, this will, all, this will be a, a positive blend that could allow some stock buying. Now, finally, on Friday, besides the Chinese inflation data, uh, which we already mentioned later in the day, we have two more top tier data sets due to be released. And those are the US CPIs for May and Canada's unemployment report for the same month. Getting the ball rolling with uh, the US, the headline rate is expected to have held steady at 8.3% year over year, but the core one is seen declining to 5.9% from 6.2%. This could revive some speculation that the Fed could slow or indeed pause its hiking process after summer, but in our view, it is too early to say with certainty something like that. After all, the Fed appears committed to deliver two more double hikes in June and July. And as for the subsequent meetings, we will get a lot more data before arriving to safer con conclusions. Even if officials themselves, uh, even officials themselves uh, know that uh, in their prior gathering, according to the minutes, that it is too early to be confident that deflation has already peaked. We prefer to take things day by day. And as we already noted, the dollar could continue sliding for a while more, but on the first fresh sign that inflation could turn up again, or on fresh comments uh, dismissing the likelihood of a post-summer break by the Fed, the currency could turn up again. Now, flying to Canada, the unemployment rate is forecast to have held steady at 5.2%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has added 24 uh, thousand jobs, more than the 15.3 thousands added in April. At last week's gathering, the Bank of Canada hiked by 50 basis points, its second double hike in a row, taking its benchmark rate to 1.5%. That said, this was largely anticipated and fully priced in. So, in our view, the most important takeaway from this gathering was that the bank reiterated its willingness to act more forcefully if needed. So with that in mind, and this unemployment report could allow the Looney to keep adding to gains for a while more. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 8.30 a.m. GMT. So, Goodbye, have a nice day and a better rest of the week. JFT, just fair and direct.